recording. Well, welcome again, everyone, to this meeting today, to our campaign manager's mid-campaign check-in. My name is Jacqueline Hernandez. I'm one of the associate directors for our Sunshine Zone um, with Regions 2 and 4. Um, our other associate directors are Jose Rodriguez. He couldn't be with us today, but we appreciate all of his help in this process as well. And we welcome all of his campaign managers and loan executives and everyone on his team. And also we have um, Stacy Marciato, um, who is our associate director for Region 3. So with that being said, we welcome you. Please feel free to ask any questions, write them in the chat, or just go ahead and unmute yourself when we give that opportunity. So take it away, Stacey. Well, hello everyone, good afternoon, and thank you so much for attending this check-in. I was so happy to see all of the names uh, of uh, partners that I've been working with, and I'm just very grateful that you took the time to be a part of it. Um, so we wanna give you a little update on the Sunshine CFC Zone 22 progress. And we're really excited about uh, the totals. And as you can see on the slide, Region 1 has uh, already met 189,967. Region 2, 89,257. Region 3, 83,953. And Region 4, 79,889. So we're really uh, so grateful for everything that you're doing. Uh, it has been such a pleasure working with you all. And let's continue to make this an amazing and uh, really successful campaign uh, for, to help those in need. So with that being said, uh, can we move to the next slide? Alrighty, we wanted to take a moment to review the uh, weekly pledge report that you receive each week. Generally, I send them out on Friday morning, sometimes Thursday evening, but we wanted to just give a little clarification as to uh, the campaign total. So your campaign total is the one you will find in column K, the total monetary value. And this is a, a combination uh, of the sum of columns C and F. So the total uh, for the total dollars pledge and volunteer value. Now, if you have any specific questions about that, we just want you to keep in mind that it is uh, K, line K that you should be keeping an eye on for your weekly pledge report. Next slide. Alrighty, so we wanted to also take another moment to emphasize the campaign resources that you have available to you. I know we have taken time with you during the campaign manager training and the one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings that we're having when we, when we meet with you for, uh, when you come to pick up uh, promotional and campaign materials. But we also wanted to let you know again, once, once again, that you have so many resources available. Uh, remember to include in your communications and high traffic areas, the how to give poster. Uh, we feel that that's a really important way people will see that, uh, those high traffic areas. Uh, and then you might also wanna include your CFC code and the zip code. So everyone has that information available in case they have a moment, they're at their desk and they wanna give, they will have that information readily available. Uh, we want you to also share the campaign progress barometer to keep everyone uh, informed of the campaign. So that's just a really unique way of, uh, it's a great visual. So um, other great tools that we have av available are, and we've spoken about these, the toolkits. The toolkits are amazing. They have everything you need, uh, great information that will help you and will walk you through the campaign. Um, it, it, there is information about how to get started. I know some are getting started a little later. And so you can go, go to those, cool, uh, those toolkits uh, at any time. Also, there's information for the leadership, event planning, which we're gonna get into in detail. A little bit, uh, Jackie's going to speak about event planning in detail. The cause of the week, which we've been sharing uh, every week with you all uh, this week is military support. Uh, so uh, also Giving Tuesday, which is coming up and finishing strong. Uh, we encourage you to download uh, these resources uh, from the Sunshine website and utilize them. We don't want you to have to work you know, more when those things are available for you. Next slide. Uh, 
And now we're going to hand it over to Jackie. Uh, she will discuss event planning resources. So with that, Jackie. Thank you so much, um, Stacy, for all that information. Again, as Stacy was mentioning, we have a lot of resources available for you on our website. Some of them include event planning. Um, for some of you, this might be the first time um, being a campaign manager um, in the campaign, and you might not know what should I do or how should I plan an event. Don't worry, we have those um, resources available for you from the events toolkit um, to an events guide and also the CFC events training. All of these are available on our website. You can download them and go through all the amazing information that they have. You know, why campaign events are important? They are great resources for everyone, first of all, to get to know what the CFC is. Um, I know a lot of you have reached out and said, we have a lot of new employees in the agency. They uh, may not know exactly what the campaign is. So definitely try to do at least one event so you can explain what the um, Combined Federal Campaign is and everyone can have an opportunity to learn more. We also um, wanna motivate everybody else um, to participate in yourselves and make sure that when you do so, you include charities. They are the heart of the campaign and everyone wants to get to know what charities are available, um, how they help our communities and how their donation that they make through the CFC will impact those charities as well. Now, speaking a little bit more about events, um, since last year, we've been doing a lot of this virtual. Um, so if you are deciding to do an event that's virtual, try to keep it short and upbeat and to the point, you don't want people to get um, virtual um, you know, fatigue. You want them to be engaged, try to do, encourage participation by giving away awards or maybe prizes. Um, you can go ahead and make sure that you go ahead and use those CFC goodies and that we give away that CFC swag as prices. You know, we have um, the little notebooks that you can use and other prices as well that um, we shared out with you. So definitely keep that in mind. You can speak at your agency and see if you can give out specific prices such as premium parking spots or maybe a first choice at a conference room or maybe a lunch with a leader or some time off, you know, get with your leadership and see what else you can give away and try to keep it um, fun and encourage participation that way. You can maybe come up with a creative trophy, you know, give the winner um, of the competitions throughout the campaign a trophy and maybe they can pass it on through each competition. You can sometimes use a wheel of names generator. Um, if you have multiple people that have the right answer and you just want to select one, you can use that. Make sure that when you do your events, um, you announce the winners. You want to recognize them. You want to share that information through emails, through your intranet, through social media. You want to recognize their participation. We want to remind you that practice makes perfect. I mean, even though we've been doing this for two years, sometimes um, things happen and it's good to always have somebody else with you on that training. You know, today we have Stacy um, here helping me as well. We have our um, regional director as well. Jamie is here with us. So definitely have those other people join you and also help you in that process. Something that we recommend that can also help you is requiring registration. This can definitely help you keep track on who's gonna attend. And um, as well, if you require that, you can have their emails and then maybe send a quick note afterwards, thanking them for participating. And once again, always, 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 Try to keep charities at the heart of your event. Talking about charities, we wanted to take a moment to um, go over the process of incorporating charities. Um, before you request charities, try to decide how many charities you will need for your event, um, what details they need to know for the event, um, how much time they will have to speak, if they need to provide a PowerPoint presentation or a video that you need prior to the event. We will be asking all that information in order to go through a process and then send you the confirmation of what charities have confirmed for your activity. So please keep those details in mind. Um, and if you have not done so already, try to um, do an event incorporating them. Maybe you can do a lunch and learn like we do. Invite a few charities, interview them, record it, and then share it out with everyone in your agency for their benefit if they cannot make it to your event. So just wanted to share that with you and remind you that you know charities are 
the heart of the campaign and we want to keep them involved in as many events as possible. Now, we wanted to talk a little bit more about event ideas. Um, you might be asking, what type of events could I do? This document right here is part of our toolkit. When you download it, you can access it and it has so many great ideas for you to, um, to try to incorporate in your campaign. One that I personally really like is bingo. I'm a big fan of bingo. So if that's something that your agency likes as well, you can also um, incorporate that. Um, we wanted to invite a few campaign managers to share their ideas so everybody else can learn what they do and how they do this great events for the campaign. So I'm going to get started and ask um, one of our LEs, Ms. Jackie Slater. She is from Region 3 and she is here with us today. Um, Jackie, I'm not sure if you can hear me and then join us and share a little bit more about what you do um, in the campaign as well. Yes, um, I can hear you and thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Perfect, okay. Um, again, my name is Jacqueline slater Canali, and I work for U.S. Customs and Border Protection at Fort Lauderdale International Airport. I am a Chief Agriculture Specialist, and I oversee a multifaceted operation of supervisors and agriculture specialists that protect the homeland and secure our international borders to prevent harmful agro and biological items from entering the United States. This is my second tour volunteering with the CFC as the loaned executive for Region 3. My first opportunity was in 2019 prior to COVID. I'm happy to be back and working with such a wonderful team to include this year's associate director, Stacy Marziotti. Working with Stacy has been a great experience and with her support, I foresee a positive and successful campaign. With the latest technology CFC has made giving easy and with so many enhancements and ease of website use, the information provided and the opportunity to help others is at our fingertips. I wanted to talk to you about CFC events, the planning and how our team at Customs and Border Protection are working to support CFC through these challenging times of masking <coughs> and social distancing. To main work, maintain workplace safety Scheduled events are coordinated and typically held in a break room. The break room will have promotional items and campaign materials on display and available. This also provides an opportunity for anyone needing assistance with the mobile app to have one-on-one -on -one assistance from a team member. The CFC team meets to discuss ideas and dates for events. The campaign manager then publicizes the event prior to the date and will include photos and a description of the pickup and or delivery items. To date, the team has had several events to include dessert bake sales and boxed lunches with plans for future boxed lunches a chili cook-off, a barbecue contest, and a mobile pop-up gift shop where trinkets will be available. These events have successfully generated numerous pledges from our donors. Associate Director Stacy and I have also worked together sending invitations to provide regularly scheduled campaign material distribution pickups for those campaign managers in our region. These pickups have been very successful as well. A display table was also set up with campaign materials to include posters, mobile application information, pledge forms, charity books, and display items for the various levels of giving to include the beautiful 60th Diamond Donor gift coins. 
Each campaign manager that arrived would sign in and receive individual attention to include detail and specific information regarding the CFC campaign. Stacy and I answered questions, provided suggestions, and asked for feedback. Stacy and I also felt the process was very helpful in building strong and meaningful relationships with our federal partners. I am proud to be a part of the CFC campaign, knowing that federal employees can make such a great impact. We make the world a better place through our CFC donations and help so many by being a part of something so grand and so special. I want to thank you all for being a part of the Combined Federal Campaign. And thank you, and I'll turn it back over to you, Jackie. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for being with us today and for sharing all that information with us. Um, we appreciate um, all the work that you do and all the work that all the loan executives do to help all of our campaign managers um, throughout the campaign. I wanted to open the discussion to everybody else um, to share ideas and events that you have been doing, especially now that we are virtual and a lot of agencies um, are pretty much trying to see if they can do events more virtual than in person. Um, so if anybody else would like to share, um, if anybody also from Jose's team that is here and you would like to unmute and share a few of the ideas that you do, please feel free now to share away for the benefit of everybody else. Hey, this is Meredith Reeves from NASA Kennedy Space Center. Hi, Meredith, thank you for being here. Hi, I can share some. Uh, I don't yes. know if your will work, hold on just a second. So um, we are mostly all virtual at KSC. We have about two, over 2000 uh, civil servants to reach. Um, and so that's definitely challenging. Virtually, there are very few people working on center. And so, um, so we do everything that we can virtually. We have, you know, within our kind of normal things that happen at KSC, we've got uh, daily news that comes out that is for anybody to post things. So we have at least three things go in a week. Uh, we have a trivia that goes in that's just run through Microsoft um, forms. And so that's how we get some participation and we give out some prizes from the pool of winners. We uh, give a weekly update for the campaign, you know, how, what, how things are going and any other special things are happening uh, for events. And we also have one dedicated message for the cause of the week. So that's every week, um, things that can kind of, you know, if people are looking for it, they'll see it there. We have had several events uh, planned and, and already happened. Um, virtual events, of course, we can't do anything in person. And so uh, all through Teams, which is what we use at KSC, we have um, panel discussion, we do trivia, we show campaign videos. We, on the next one that we have next week, we do have a charity coming in to uh, speak. Um, one of the unit coordinators at our center has taken upon themselves to do lunch and learns every Friday. So um, it was for her in organization, but we've opened it up to everybody. So we've had very consistent Friday lunch and learns um, that align with the cause of the week. And we have done a couple campaign videos. Only one has gone out so far for the kickoff from our senior leaders. Um, so everything that we can do um, virtually, we're, we're getting it out there. We have a website that we try to put kind of a banner image on uh, to get things out. And of course we have people doing quality contacts. Um, we have a weekly update email that goes out to everybody on the campaign to send out. Um, that's just reminders about you know entering your right zip code and all those kinds of things and about the coin this year. Um, and we, we did, uh, just like CFC is kind of doing their own, um, picture frame thing with, with some testimonials. We, we did our own, we did that last year too, collected some information from employees about why they like to donate and they sent a picture in and we have our own little picture frame for that. So, um, I think that's, that covers most of it. Um, any questions from here? Hey, Meredith, hey, it's Jamie. Hey. Um, I noticed, so... Can you talk to them about your intranet? You guys have links from your intranet to the CFC website, correct? Uh, our own internal website? Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you guys, um, what other kinds of things do you share on there and how did you go about doing that? Yeah, I mean, we, so, so, you know, I don't know how other people are set up. We do have a, we do have an internal, you know, website for employees just behind our firewall. And um, so that we have our, our CFC dedicated page. Um, we have, I should pull it up to look, but basically when somebody lands on the page, we have these thermometers that show our progress for donations and for quality contacts. And, um, and then we have anything you can think of linked to there. So we do have a letter that came out from our center director to kick off the campaign. So that email came out the day we kicked off, but it also went on the website. So if anybody wants to see it, they can get to it easily. We have a kickoff video that is linked to that page. We have obviously donate, find a charity that goes straight to the CFC pages. We have our faces, our own faces of change page where we highlight our picture frames that, that people have done. Um, we have an events and announcements page where it's actually actually worked out really well this year. They, they switched platforms. So it's a SharePoint based site. And um, so we have them put our events on there and then there's like a little plus button on there that people can actually add it right to their calendar um, if they want to do that. And then it's a Teams event. So the, the link to join is within that event uh, invite. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I that's don't think, I don't think people realize how such, something just it's so random for you guys like of course you're doing it it drives so much participation um the number one um reference to our sunshine website is actually from nasa from huh. the internet it's the number one like resource of people coming to our uh our searches outside of you know a link that we might send them through a newsletter so it yeah that's has a huge impact yeah no that's great to hear because we don't you know with every single thing we do including the website um the only thing that we know is that people are donating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we don't get, we don't get a whole lot of feedback. You know, of course, when we have an event, we look at attendance. We had our kickoff event was like over 230 people, which was way more than I thought it was going to be. Um, really great attendance. The lunch and learns have had like around 50 or 60 people. We've had good participation. And so that gives us some sense of how, how much reach we have. But um, it's great to hear that uh, people are actually using the site. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to give you guys, all of you guys, first, thank you for attending. This is really helpful and informative. Um, of course. Um, one of the things I look at, so um, for everyone's getting those newsletters from Stacy and, and from Jackie and Jose each week, I can see when we look at like our website analytics, um, Fridays are the busiest days on our website which means they're coming um, from you guys. They're, they're getting those newsletters. They're clicking the links on the newsletters. I can track how people get to our website and where they're going. And we're seeing that they're direct links that somebody wouldn't have a direct link to maybe like an impact statement, but that direct link is coming in from those newsletters. So keep sharing those newsletters with your team members, with your key workers, um, even with employees. I think it's absolutely no reason those can't be sent out to employees, you know, as part of your weekly communication. Um, we are seeing a lot of click-throughs um, on the links that we have highlighted in those newsletters. So great job with that, you guys. And like Meredith said, their intranet, if you guys have them, if you've got your own internal website, every time people log in, they're seeing it and they're seeing the CFC reminder each day. That's a really great way to contact people and share um, your own internal events, our lunch and learns, anything that you want to share with them about the CFC. That's a really cool opportunity. Thank you so much, Jamie. And thank you so much, Meredith, as well, for um, sharing. This is very beneficial for everybody else. Um, that's why we wanted to do this. We wanted you as campaign managers to share what you do so that everybody else can gather ideas and also see what they can implement on their agencies as well. Um, I don't know if anybody else will have any other ideas that they would also like to share at this moment. Please feel free to do so. We want to hear everything that you're doing. We do have a question, Jackie. Do you want me yes. to read it? Mm -hmm. uh, do you know where I can find a link to CFC financial slash spending information? We've been receiving a lot of questions about what costs, uh, what it costs to run CFC and how much it costs charities to participate. I can Jane, jump in a little yes. bit of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So Thank if you, you guys take a look at um, on our websites, we've got our, the PDF, I'm sorry, of our, mm -hmm. of our, I have to come up with the, the, the words are failing me today. I apologize. Our charity listing book has um, a huge FAQ section at the beginning of it. And that's going to all mm -hmm. be covered in there um, as far as um, what the cost is, um, 
I don't, it's not going to have the amount that it costs charities to participate, but we can get that out to you guys. We can provide to you like it, OPM has just come up with actually their, the cost for 2022. So we can share that out. Um, it's just a little bit of like a, a little sheet, a little spreadsheet um, to look up so you can see what charities are spending. So it's going to depend if they're part of a federation charity, if they're an individual, if they're national, international, there's definitely a different cost. Like the local um, charities are going to pay mm -hmm. less than on um, these large federations that have multiple charities. So we can give you that information, but I absolutely use that charity listing book as a resource. It's got really good information at the beginning of it. Um, all the FAQs in there. I, I, I just, for some reason, I can't pull the number up off, off the top of my head. I don't want to make up a number and guess. So please take a look at that um, charity listing book. Um, like I said, the beginnings of that will have it. And it's on our website, on our pledge materials. You can just download the PDF of it and it will have all the information there as far as costs. So I don't, I, this is Meredith. I have a question on that. Um, just follow up because I think, and I don't know if that's more specifically like the administrative costs, costs per charity that you're talking about. Um, some of the questions that we've got and some of the things that we've we've looked at just a little bit, but that, you know, are, are starting to come up are about overall campaign costs. Like, what the government is paying for this and how it's so, different yeah. than it used to be and um, that people kind of feel like they should know things and that they don't really know things. And yeah, yeah. Well, let me, oh, oh, a couple of things. So the government, it's zero cost to the government. All the, the, the cost of running the campaign does come from donations. Um, the charity, it actually, I'm sorry, it does not come from the donation. It comes from the charity's upfront cost of paying to be part of the campaign um, there's sort of a two fee, there's three fees. There's the cost to apply. And then there's a listing fee to be listed in the charity book. Um, and then if the fees are not recouped to cover the cost of the campaign, there's a third fee that they get at the end of the campaign that they pay on the, ta on the tail end from their last payment. Um, I don't think that that's been exercised in the last year or two, um, but the cover of the cost of running the CFC comes from the charities themselves in the application and listing process. So it's not coming, it's not the government paying for it. Um, it administers the campaign, but it does not pay for it. Yeah, thank you. I think, yeah, I, that's that's what I understood too. I, I guess the the questions are coming from like, you know, just what that actually, that cost ends up being versus yeah, yeah. What, what donations actually go to the charities. I think people are concerned about those numbers. So 100% of the donations go to the charities. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, I, I suppose it's a little sleight of hand. Like they pay on the front end themselves and then they get the donations. So, you know, it kind of, but it also goes to, if a charity doesn't get any donations at all, then they paid for the, the cost of the campaign and um, <laughs> they didn't receive funds on the, on the other end of it. So um, yeah, it does come from the application fees and then those listing fees. Um, there is that distribution fee that would come um, if that doesn't cover it all. Like I said, I don't, that would not, was not exercised last year. I'm looking to find the percent overall, like, like you're looking for like 10% of the overall dollars raised is the cost of the campaign. And I'm looking for that number. Um, I will probably have to get back to you guys with that number, what it was last year. And it will fluctuate from year to year, of course, based on how much is raised. Jamie, appreciate yeah. that. And Meredith, thank you for your feedback. We have another question. Uh, how should the barometer be used? Do we set a target in the office or is there a region-wide target? Um, thank you for that question. Um, we encourage agencies um, to set up their own goals if, if you want, a monetary goal, not a participation goal um, because we don't want anyone to feel like they have to participate. Um, but let's say that your agency has a certain amount that they would like to reach, maybe surpass what they did last year, um, then you can go ahead and use that um, in the barometer to keep track of how your campaign is doing and how you're working towards that goal. Just a, a point of yeah. some, some folks I this year have not wanted to set goals for dollars. Mm -hmm. So they've set yes. um, their contact goal. So everyone has a hundred percent contact goal. So if you're able to track, you know, how many, you know, where you're at in your contact rate, it trying to reach that 100%. Some uh, agencies are tracking it by contact percentage as well. Yes, that it's a great idea as well. So you have those two options um, to use the barometer um, in your agencies as well. So feel free to use either or, or both of them as well. Anybody else would like to share any other ideas um, that you're doing, how your campaign is doing um, for events? Just wanted to open the floor for everyone, feel free. 
If not, you can also share them with us later um, and then we can definitely um, share it out for the benefit of everybody else. Um, but we just wanted to do this um, to have that open discussion and, and we appreciate all the events that you shared and all those ideas um, because it's it's always great to hear what everybody else is doing. Recently, I, I went to, I attended a virtual activity from one of the agencies and they included trivia throughout the entire kickoff. Um, they used the templates that we have on our website for messages and they included trivia for the CFC. For example, um, how many charities are participating? or what year was the CFC established, stuff like that. And then at the end, the first person who answered in the chat, so everybody was trying to answer at once, would get a prize. So that is just an idea out there that I saw and, and it was fun, everybody participated and everybody was um, also you know, being attentive and interactive in, in the activity. So definitely take that with you. Um, if you probably have not been able to do a kickoff by now, um, because a few of the campaign managers have reached out regarding that, you might be able, and just an idea, to pre-record maybe a message from leadership, one message um, from you as a campaign manager, put it together in a presentation with one of our campaign videos for the CFC, pre-record it and send it out to everyone. That could be used as a kickoff as well um, if you do not have the time to put together an entire activity. So just wanted to share that with you and give you more ideas. Um, to see if maybe that will help you. Well, we okay. have a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Stacey. Yes, we have a question. And uh, Jean Marie says, I'm trying to plan a cornhole contest between the crews, but I don't know how to tie that in with a charity list. Can you illustrate that? I'm sorry for such a stupid question. No, no question is stupid. So you're just looking for an idea how to tie in the uh, charity to the cornhole contest between the crews. That's a interesting yes. question. Anyone how, have any ideas? Has anybody because, done that in the past? Well, we can't uh, to have the competition. We cannot. We don't do the the cash um, cash donations anymore. So that used to be what would be the resolve. Um, they would pay into the cook-off or the, the challenges. We had a series of challenges. And now that we don't do the cash, now I'm like, how do we tie it in? And do the winners select the charity? I mean, I don't know how to get it from this competition to a pledge form. Do you know what oh, I mean? Okay, yes, yes, yes. I know what you mean. I'm trying to see, I, I have, have not had an, an agency do that before. I, I want to reach out to Jamie and see if maybe she has heard from another agency do that activity and then kind of like help out in that process too, Jamie. Well, Miss um, Slater Canali had um, suggested or had mentioned mm -hmm. about a chili cook off and um, various other competitions. So I would like to know how um, it had come up to how like did the winners have to was that a charity pre-selected by the management or um how did that tie in together I, I just I'm trying to get it all tied in and I know that I can get my um my controllers here to be competitive and it would be a lot of fun but then I don't know what to do to extrapolate that, that into a charity listing yeah, for, for the charities, thing. yeah, perfect. When, when you do events, you can also um, set up an event on the CFC app, which um, we introduced last year. Um, for the charities, it's still the same process um, that we do. You request charities for the event, and then you tell us how many charities, and then we'll let you know which ones are confirmed. Um, but then for the, um, the CFC app, which is different, um, you can set up an event and everyone in your agency can donate. They can make a one-time donation through the app for that event. Um, but it could be, you know, an open donation just, you know, to participate. We don't want anyone to also feel like, you know, they have to um, donate a certain amount of time of um, money, but also, you know, you, you can use the CFC app definitely to go ahead and do that. We can definitely sit down and, and go over, yeah, what the event will be. And, and I can show you, you know, you can give me the information and I can definitely help you set that up, that request on the CFC app. 
Um, talking about the app, I'm not sure if everybody has had an opportunity to download it. If you haven't, please make sure that you do and you familiarize yourself with it because we've been getting a lot of questions on how to make a donation through the app. And also mm -hmm. same as um, the question now, how can you set up an event? Because I know that previously we had a lot of events and cash was accepted. And since now it's not, everyone has the same question, you know, what else can we do? We understand that. I so the thinking, CFC app, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was thinking, you know, it'd be a fun way is you could do, you could use a CFC app and you could set it up in there and then to participate mm -hmm. in it, maybe they make a, do a donation to participate in the cornhole tournament or mm -hmm. whatever you're looking to do. Even if it was like a chili cook-off and you want to be a taster, exactly. and a chili cook-off, you would pay a $5 fee and then all they have to do is show you the app on their phone that they did it or send you, you know, you could do an honor system too. Like I think we're, people are adult yes. enough to do an honor system, but um and then you could do that and then they be, become an official tester in the, in the event, or they can participate in the event. And um, you could ask everyone, you know, make a donation to a charity in the, in mm -hmm. your, your favorite cause or this, you know, in veterans causes for the week um, and tie it in right. that way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's okay. uh, just to mention that. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yes. I was just going to say, Oh no, I think no, you no, might no, be no, able no. to add a little something more to that. Correct. If well, I'm not correct. Well, that's, that's exactly right. That is how we've been uh, working it is um, the anyone that does want to participate is uh, going to the event on the app and then they are making their donation based on the charity that they would like to donate to. And it just keeps it very, you know, fluid and it doesn't put anyone into any position that causes any type of um, other discussions or concerns and it allows for flexibility so that the events can be conducted that way. And it seems to be a great way to conduct the event is by having people utilize the mobile app um, and the more you use it, the more you become familiar with it, the easier it is to use. It's just a few steps and setting up a profile. But once your, your staff sees how to use it, um, they can use it for each one of the events. And the event will pop up on the app based on your zip code. Uh, there's a couple of ways to um, pull the event up and um, it does make it easier. Um, and it's very um, user friendly once you're familiar with it and you set up your profile, then you're able to have your uh, information maintained in the app. So it's very easy to get to, and people can do numerous uh, pledges. So you can do one, and you're finished with that one. Then you can do another one. So um, that that is my suggestion um, as one of the ways. Of course, outside of people doing the hard copy paper pledges and going to the computer is another way. So for some people that are not as comfortable with a mobile app, there are still ways that they can handle um, those pledges. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. I, thank you so thank much for you. sharing. And definitely um, when, when you do an event in the app, you know, um, the donor also has the opportunity to select from any other charity as well, not just the ones that are participating in, in the event too. Or you can do an activity with, you know, not a specific charity, but just open and everyone can just go ahead and to participate, just make a donation to their favorite charity. So you can definitely go ahead and do that. I hope that answering your question, Jim Marie, just let me know if anything else, please feel free to reach out. And Jackie, Thank you. Uh, yes. yes, and Jackie, uh, Jamie gave some really great information in the chat box. So if, uh, you know, you all want to take a look, it's regarding the mobile app. So uh, just take a look at the chat some, you know, at some time during the course of this uh, presentation. 
Yeah, and I would just say the app you can also use, you guys, if you don't have access to a, a computer. You know, if we've got a lot of folks mm-hmm. on postal service or sometimes with CBP that aren't working at a, a dedicated um, computer and they can yes. use the giving app to do their payroll gift now. Um, previously, you couldn't do payroll deduction, but now you can. Um, and then the other thing is if you do set up something in, in the giving app and you want to set up an event, Jean Marie, like I can pull um, donations by type so i can see that they're mobile i and i can see you know if it's your workplace we'll be able to isolate what they are so if you end up setting one up and you want to be able to track that we can there's an extra report that we can pull that we don't send out weekly just because it's a very random report but if we know what we're looking for we can pull that for you guys Mm -hmm. to track the giving app so absolutely use it it's a great resource for you all perfect thank you so so much Right. So um, if anybody else has any ideas um, that you would like to share, please share them with um, your associate directors, me, Stacy, and Jose. We want to keep hearing what you're doing. We want to keep sharing that with everybody else so you can continue to get creative and get those um, ideas out and do those events for the campaign. Now, um, we wanted to talk a little bit more about social media engagement. You know, as the world's most popular platform, you know, Facebook holds the biggest CFC presence and support network. And we are always, um, now more than ever, everything is virtual. We are always on the internet. So this is a great way to engage with the campaign. If you have not done so, we invite you to go ahead and like our Sunshine Zone um, Facebook page. We post um, a lot of great information about the campaign and what we're doing every week. Um, Once you see those, Um, posts, feel free to like or comment them to increase awareness for other users. You know, the more likes and comments, the more times it will continue to appear and reappear on someone else's feed. Um, If there is a post that you see that is reflecting an event um, of your home agency or a cause that you support, consider also sharing that post in your own profile. You know, you can use the hashtags that we use um, and that way it will continue to create awareness and create more potential followers um, and audiences in the CFC. A lot of the agencies also have, um, you know, your own Facebook page. So if you post um, anything that is regarding the CFC, use the hashtags that we use as well. Um, Share the posts that we have on our Sunshine um, page as well with your agency um, so that everybody can see them. And the more that they keep sharing, the more they post, the more people like, Um, the post that way more people will know what's happening in the campaign and they will get more and more engaged. These are just a few examples we wanted to share with you. For example, the first one on the left is someone that attended um, the kickoff and wanted to share and then tagged the Facebook page so that everybody could see what they were doing for that event. If you also want to reference a link and do a call to action, you know, we are having Giving Tuesday coming up. So you can also do that as part of um, the campaign, like the posts and share them as well. Or if you just want to make a post about the campaign yourself and then use our hashtag or tag our Facebook page so that more people can go ahead and get to know it. I'm sorry, was somebody, did I interrupt somebody? I didn't know if somebody was going to speak, sorry. Um, But just make sure that you do that. Um, Engage with our social media, keep sharing our posts, keep liking our posts, and also interact with your own agency's um, Facebook page as well. Now, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Stacy because we want to talk to you a little bit more about the contests that we're having this year. Stacy. Hi, everyone again. And um, we just want to get really excited about the contests that are happening. And as we stated earlier, it's the 60th anniversary of the CFC, and we just are so excited about that. And as part of the celebration, anniversary celebration, uh, the CFC is hosting the 60th anniversary contest. And it, as you can see, it has three, three categories. The first two are the best use of technology and best campaign videos. The first one is the best digital communication award for the most creative use of their website video tools and social media to communicate the CFC story and celebrate the 60th anniversary, CFC 60th anniversary. And the second one is the best campaign video award, which is really exciting for producing the most creative brief video incorporating the CFC anniversary to promote the campaign. And then we have the best anniversary photo award for a photo or photos of a campaign worker 
for workers highlighting the 60th anniversary logo in the most fun, unique, or interesting location. So we really ask you to please think about this. Uh, it's a fun way to get people engaged. Um, we really would hope that you know you would uh, take the time. It wouldn't take you long. Download the the contest submission form and um, you know get it to us so we can share on our um, social media and then we can have a winner. We're also giving out prizes, so prizes are always fun. So keep those in mind, please. And the next one is the. Uh, we wanted to go to the next slide and talk to you a little bit about giving, uh, giving together, giving Tuesday. And um, we would ask again, this is our fearless leader, Jamie McKenna, and her little puppy there. It's a, a great um, uh, picture there. And uh, we asked, we encourage you to please uh, assist us in helping us to uh, put together a Giving Tuesday promotion video. It's so easy. Uh, you take a selfie or if you have a picture on your phone and you could just send it to your uh, computer. That's what I did. And I actually had a, a photo of some photos on there and just talk a little bit about your passions, uh, you know, what you causes you care about and then answer a couple of questions. It will literally take you like two to three minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the, put them all together and make a video. And um, so Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and it's an international day of giving that uh, kicks off the holiday giving se season. So please help us with that. Uh, we're creating that video. It will feature all the federal employees from all over the world. We want you to be a part of it. Send your photo and uh, tell us why you give. Um, so please uh, submit the forms by uh, the, you know, the, photo and the explanation and how like you're, you're going to see how Jamie's came out at the end and we need to have it by November 12th. So we look forward to seeing uh, many of you participate in this. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Jackie. Here we go. Sorry, before we finish and then we ask um, if anybody has any questions, I wanted to take a moment since we spoke about um, the coin um, for this year, which I love, it looks amazing. It is for the diamond donors that give $60, you know, we're sticking to the 60 for the anniversary, that give $60 per month and then 720 per year. This is the coin. I'm going to go ahead and move over here. So you see it. This is one side. It says combined federal campaign and thank you. And then on the other side, it has the logo and then it has 60 years of impact. So um, just wanted to show it to you so you would see. Um, take a moment to promote also the coin. Um, it is, again, as Jamie said, it's an honor system. And if you have any donors that tell you they donated that amount, um, let us know, the associate directors, how many coins you would need. And then towards the end of the campaign, we will make sure we get those out to you. Um, so again, we have a lot of... Um, employees that love collecting coins. So we wanted to do this this year as an opportunity as well to celebrate our 60th anniversary. Um, does anybody have any questions, anything that you would like um, to share? How do we get? Okay, so once you let us know, um, the associate directors will get in touch with the campaign managers to give you the coins once you tell us how many you need um, for your agency. You know, you might promote the coin in the agency and tell everybody, hey, if you donated $60 a month and $720 and you're a diamond um, donor, um, let us know and then we can get you your coin. And that way we'll keep track of each agency, how many you need, and we'll get it to you. And also we have a comment from Jamie giving the link to uh, participate in the Giving Tuesday. So if you want to copy the link, so you would have that. Uh, we would really appreciate you to do that. Thank so you, anybody else. Thank you so much, Stacy, for you know helping with the <laughs> with huh. the chat. I appreciate that. Does anybody else have any questions? Any um, other comments? Anything else you would like to share with the group? Right. Well, um, again, we would like to thank all of you for being here, for all of your questions, for sharing everything that you're doing. Um, feel free to reach out to us at any moment in time. If you need anything else, we are here for you. We wish you the best campaign yet. 
I know we're halfway there and now it's when it gets really busy. So um, those numbers are going to still to come, um, continue to come in and we're going to still be by your side, helping you in everything you need. So wishing you a great campaign and let us know if you need our help. Yes, thank you so much. Happy campaigning and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. you all. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate y'all.